Whether you're a high school student looking for inside days or a PhD student transitioning into finance, getting an internship at a reputable investment bank is a surefire way to fast track your career and set yourself up for success. But there's no doubt about it, getting internships is hard. That's why in this video, we're going to take a deep dive into the investment banking application process and share our tips and tricks along the way. Hi guys, Joe here from Money Talks, and today I'll be sharing my advice on how to land a Bold Racket internship. But first, a little about myself. During my undergraduate degree, I worked at Morgan Stanley in their London sales and trading division for over a year on the industrial placement scheme. For any non-British viewers, here in the UK, as well as having more traditional spring weeks and summer internships, most firms also run year-long internships, which is what I completed. The advice in this video is highly applicable to all types of internships, as well as graduate roles. While my examples will focus on sales, trading and markets, the core themes are still very relevant for other roles like investment banking, asset management and wealth management. So let's get started. After submitting your CV and cover letter, the standard application process for internships in investment banks consists of three or four stages. First, psychometric tests. Secondly, a video or telephone interview. Third, potentially another telephone interview. And fourth, an assessment centre. Let's start with psychometric tests. Broadly speaking, these can be numerical, logical reasoning or situational judgment and tend to be timed. Firms use these tests to see whether your values align with those of the firm, whether you have a sufficient level of numeracy and how you reason under pressure. Many firms have unique ways of presenting these tests and different firms put different amounts of weight on the results. For example, Morgan Stanley uses a job simulation where you respond to fictitious emails and complete tasks. They are an example of a firm who rejects a lot of applicants at this initial stage, by some estimates around 70%. Clearly, doing well on these tests is important. So how should you prepare? The first step I recommend is to find out which software the firm uses to test its applicants. UBS, for example, uses Corn Ferry, who I will link in the description. This can be done with a quick Google search and will mean that you can find similar practice tests either on the provider's website or on a third party website. Completing practice tests is a great way to get a feel for the types of questions that might come up and will help you get used to the format of the testing software. My second top tip is to look up the firm's core values. This is a vital step that lots of applicants miss, as fit-based questions will often directly relate to these. While firms often say, answer the question honestly, there is a right and wrong answer, and this is a common reason applicants fail at this stage. Moving on to the first interview stage. This will typically be a video interview via a company called HireVue, but in some cases, including with Morgan Stanley, will be a telephone interview. Some firms, like JP Morgan, ask you to complete the video interview within five days of submitting your psychometric tests, so make sure you are prepared to complete this stage before submitting your initial application. Video interviews are fairly consistent across firms, typically consisting of around three to five pre-recorded questions, with 30 seconds to a minute to prepare your answer and two to three minutes to record it. Some firms, like JP Morgan for example, allow you to re-record your answer once, while others do not. These parameters will be clearly explained in each interview. At this stage, the questions will mainly be competency and motivation based, with any technical questions being very broad and vague. Importantly, if the first interview is via the phone, I recommend emailing the firm's HR to confirm what style of question will be asked. There's nothing worse than preparing for a competency interview and then only being asked technical questions. Trust me, I've been there. Common competency questions that I've been asked include things like, give me an example of a time that you've solved a problem, talk about a situation when you use teamwork, 
and tell me about a time you've demonstrated flexibility. In order to prepare for these, look at the job description where the firm highlights the skills needed for the internship and look at the company's core values. Make a list of these skills and think of an example from your past experiences for each potential question. These examples do not need to be related to finance or banking. I've used examples from working in restaurants and from group projects at university. If you have relevant experience, great. But if not, make sure to say how you will apply what you learned in other roles to the role that you are applying for. For example, the flexibility you learned from dealing with difficult customers as a waiter or waitress will help you deal with the different clients you might encounter in a sales role. I recommend structuring all competency answers in a stair format. Situation, describe the role you are in. This should be no more than one sentence. Task, set the scene for when you use this skill. This should be one to two sentences. Action, what you did to show this skill. Be specific and focus on your specific contributions. This should be the largest section of the answer and be around two to four sentences long. Result, Describe how your actions impacted the end result, as well as any positive feedback you received. Again, be specific. This should be around one to two sentences. Finally, evaluation. This is where you say how you would apply this skill in the role that you are applying for in no more than two sentences. Under the pressure of an interview, it's very easy to focus too heavily on describing the situation and task instead of what you actually did. Following this structure will mean you deliver clear, focused answers that are free from waffle. Common motivational questions include why this company, why this role or division, why investment banking and finance, and tell me about yourself. Some applicants can find these questions hard to answer since they don't care whether they work at Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley, they just want a good internship. However, Companies want to see that you understand and are interested in their business. The key to answering these questions, therefore, is to do your market research. Try and understand what the firm's strengths and weaknesses are. Are they more equity or fixed income focused? Are they stronger in the US or Asia? Understand what challenges the firm is facing and who their main competitors are. A great place to start is on the company website and in articles. The company website will give you an overview of their operations and articles will give updates on any major company events. Once you have a good understanding of the overall business, start reaching out to current interns and employees from the division that you're applying to. LinkedIn is a perfect tool for this. I recommend trying to find people that you have something in common with as they're much more likely to respond. A great place to start is with alumni from your university. Add a message saying who you are, what you're applying for, and that you'd like to ask them a few questions. Don't get discouraged if you don't hear back. These are busy people, so make sure to send your messages at appropriate times. Don't send a trader a message during market open, for example. Speaking to current employees is a very important step as it shows to employers that you've taken the time to learn about their culture and their business. Being able to say, I want to work for your company because I spoke to these people and they highlighted how amazing the culture and the work is, is a great way to stand out and add some weight to what you were saying. Some companies may also include basic technical questions at this stage. Common ones that I've been asked include, talk about a recent article in the business press that interested you, and what are the biggest challenges facing the financial sector in the next five years? The best way to prepare for these interviews is to make sure you're up to date on what is happening in the markets and global news. Read publications like the Financial Times or The Economist every day and pick out the trends that you see. Where is inflation? Are interest rates going up? Have there been any big IPOs? By doing this, you ensure that you have enough basic knowledge to answer these initial technical questions. Speaking into a camera can be quite a weird experience, especially if you're not used to it. So I would highly recommend doing practice video interviews once you've prepared your answers. I'll add a link to the High View Practice page down in the description. 
after the first interview, some firms move straight to an assessment centre, while others may have a second round telephone interview, like in the case of Morgan Stanley. Second round telephone interviews are typically with someone more senior in the division you're applying to, and may be more technical than the previous interview. Once again, it's worth emailing HR to ask what style of question will be asked. A key thing to prepare before any interview is to make sure you have relevant questions to ask the interviewer. If you're being interviewed by HR, ask things like what types of candidates tend to be best for this role? And what's your process for reviewing interns? If the interviewer is part of the desk, ask questions more specific to the actual work. This shows that you're genuinely interested in the role and can help the interview to feel more like a conversation, which is always a good thing. Finally, most firms will have an assessment centre. Normally, this takes place in the company's office, but some firms have moved the process online due to COVID. This will involve several interviews with the hiring desk and potentially a group exercise. A typical assessment centre might have a competency or strength-based interview, a motivational interview and a technical interview with different members of the team you're applying to. Once again, I highly recommend emailing HR to confirm the format of the assessment centre and what interviews you will have. Competency and motivational questions will be similar to those covered in the previous interviews and there may even be some overlap to the questions asked. Technical interviews will be more specific to the desk you're applying to. For example, a fixed income desk may ask about interest rates, inflation, the yield curve and how a change in these macro trends may impact the others. Make sure to understand the theory behind these technical details, as well as how they currently relate to markets and the firm you are applying to. A question that I've been asked before is, how would an increase in interest rates affect this bank? Technical interviews often also contain brain teasers like, how many giraffes are there in France? Although these are practically impossible to prepare for, the goal of these questions is not to see whether you get the right answer, but to see how you arrive at an answer. As such, make sure to explain your thought process thoroughly and articulately during the interview, and don't be afraid to take time to think. Talking a friend or family member through some of the practice questions in the description below is a great way to get comfortable verbalising your thoughts. My biggest tip when preparing for any interview, video, telephone or in person, is to practice your answers with a friend or family member. Doing so will help highlight where your answers need to be improved and will help you get comfortable articulating what you've written down. Typically, I like to do this daily for at least a week as it helps to iron out any kinks and means I can remember which examples I've used for each question. Group projects are a way for employers to see how you perform in a team environment you'll be placed with around two to four other applicants and given a fictitious problem to solve in a certain amount of time while being watched by members of the hiring desk. Finding the right balance between offering your own ideas and listening to other people's is key. Don't let yourself be talked over, defend your ideas, but also acknowledge the pros and cons of ideas put forward by others. A great tip that I learned is to get your phone out and set a timer for the length of time you have. This way, you can insert yourself into the conversation naturally by saying, we only have five minutes left, let's move on and cover this idea. Often, the assessors will stop you halfway through and change the problem in some way. This is to see how you adapt to new situations, so be ready for this. That brings us to the end of the process. Have you found this video useful? Do you have any tips of your own? Let me know down in the comments section. Thanks for watching and have a great day.